It is Monday, the 11th of July, 2022. Good afternoon, Namibia, and a very warm welcome to today's discussion here at the Government Information Center, coming to you live from the capital city, Venduk. I am your host, Hileni Felipe Samunyela, and I'll be keeping you company for the next 50 minutes or so. Today, we are discussing occupational health and safety. And I am joined in the studio by experts from Ministry of Labor in Industrial Relations and Employment Creation that are going to help us um, understand and expound more on this topic. Uh, it's at this juncture that I would like to apologize. In, uh, as per the usual, we were supposed to bring you the COVID-19 health update, but due to technical difficulties, we are unable to bring you that report and we sincerely apologize for the inconvenience. Um, well, Namibia, Today we are talking occupational health and safety and joining me from Ministry of um, Labor, Industrial Relations and Employment Creation is Mrs. Um, Petrina Nidengwa, Deputy Director in the Division of Occupational Health and Safety. Good afternoon, ma'am, and welcome to today's discussion. Uh, good afternoon and thank you for having us. All right. We are also joined by Mr. Johannes Shihepo. He is a machinery inspector in the Division of Occupational Health and Safety in the same ministry. Good afternoon, sir, and welcome to today's discussion. Good afternoon. Thank you for having me. All right. Yeah. Now, Ms. Petrina, the Namibian labor law compels every employer to provide a safety working environment for its employees. Can you talk to us about what occupational safety and health health is and why it should be deployed in workplace. What is the importance thereof? Um, uh, thank you very much. Um, occupational health and safety, when we look at the, the, the health and safety, there are two keywords. We have safety and we have health. When we talk about occupational safety, we are referring to the protection of a worker from harm, protection from injury, protection from accident. While uh, the word health, uh, to say occupational health, uh, when you look at the definition of WHO, health, it, it, it's, it's a, a complete um, well-being of a person which considers the physical psychological and social well-being of a human being, not, not just merely the absence of, of disease. So uh, when we are talking about occupational health, we are talking about the promotion, maintenance of physical, psychological, social well-being, and together with the protection of a worker at workplace, uh, of all occupations, or to say, of all occupations at workplace. Why occupational health and safety at workplace? Um, occupational health and safety is very important because it promotes the well-being of workers. Uh, it ensures that workers' mental health is being promoted. Um, it ensures that accidents and injuries are minimized and workers' uh, well-being are maintained to a highest standard. So that is the, 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 the reason why do we need to employ, employ uh, or implement occupational health and safety at workplace. And the, the other thing or the other uh, key um, a benefit that I can add to say why do we have to to, uh, to implement occupational health and safety at workplace uh, is because when the workplace has got enough for comprehensive health and safety program, we know accidents and injuries are minimized. Um, there is a, a low cost which is associated with injuries and, and uh, um, absence from work. Um, and you know when you have these programs, it also boosts morale of employees and definitely it will also enhance productivity uh, for the organization. Hmm. Uh, Mr. Yohannes, the Labor Act provides 
for establishment of health and safety committee at workplace. What are the functions of the health and safety committees in an organization? Yeah. First of all, um, in, in any establishment where there are uh, more than 100 employees um, and um, at the request of a workplace representative, um, the, a, a, safety, a safety committee may be implemented. And um, this safety committee must consist of 50% um, uh, management as well as 50% um, uh, workers representatives. Yes, and any other person uh, agreed by the, 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 the both the committee and the employee. And um, the functions of the committees is to, is to monitor the, the implementation of occupational health and safety regulations and uh, rules in the workplace. Um, regulations being the national regulations, uh, depending on the industry, every industry, um, not all um, regulations uh, relate to, to, to every workplace, but those that relate. And also rules, um, they can be uh, their own uh, uh, safety policy. Yeah, it's, 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 it's actually uh, basically maintain, uh, monitoring the, the situation uh, in the workplace. And also to, 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 um, to, to, to advise the, 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 the employer on, 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 on any occupational health and safety related um, uh, issues in the workplace. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also any, any other businesses agreed by the employer and the employee. Mm -hmm. Yes. In your observation, mm -hmm. uh, from what you were just saying now, in your observation, do you think occupational health and safety is practiced uh, mostly here in Namibia? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right, now, Ms. Ngidangwa, ensuring a safe and health, healthy in working environment requires efforts from both the employer and the employees. And uh, so what are the responsibilities of employers as well as duties and the rights of employees in accordance with the Namibian labor law? responsibility to provide a healthy and safe working environment without hazard that can harm a worker, without a risk to, to the health of the workers, and with enough facilities, uh, facility and welfare, uh, for instance, uh, drinking water, toilets, and, and, and so on, and resting places. Um, other responsibility when you're talking about, or when we are saying employer have responsibility to make sure that they provide a working environment without hazard and risk, how do they one would perhaps want to, uh, to know how does the employer make sure that the workplace is it's free of hazards and, and risk to the safety and health of the workers? Um, the, regulation, the regulations of the health and safety of employees at work uh, requires every employer to assess the hazards and identify the risk attached to each hazard which are associated with their operations. And once they have assessed the risk and identified the hazards, uh, that will give them information to say uh, in this specific area, these are the hazards and these are the risks. So then how do we manage or how do we control those risks to minimize the exposure so that workers can be protected? So with those information, uh, uh, employers will be able to come up with control measures uh, that can minimize or can prevent uh, uh, the risk exposure. And again, when you have a risk assessment being conducted, it will provide the employer with the right information uh, to say these are the specific issues, these are the specific hazards, these are the specific risks in the company, and therefore we need to come up with this specific program that are corresponding or 
home, addressing specific hazards. So uh, the risk assessment will inform the employer to come up with uh, correct programs at workplace. And this health and safety program uh, can include training, can include um, medical surveillance because one of the uh, one of the requirements or one of the responsibilities of the employer is to make sure that uh, workers are sent for medical surveillance or medical examination which is normally conducted before the worker starts work during uh, working time to say uh, after a certain period or on an annual basis and when an employee is exiting the employment. So with those information, the employer will be able to have information to say, okay, Petrine is exposed to noise, therefore when she go for medical surveillance, she, she needs to go for a hearing test, just to make sure that he, her hearing is still uh, intact, is still normal, but not affected by the noise where she is, uh, uh, where she is working. Okay. Other responsibility, um, in addition to the control measures, uh, the, work, the employer is also having the responsibility to provide what we call personal protective equipment. Uh, um, yeah. All right. Um, whilst on that, uh, Mr. Johannes, mm -hmm. the Section 42 of the Labor Act 2007 speaks on, on, on employees' right to leave a dangerous place in an event that they, they find that the place, uh, workplace is dangerous to work on, how should employees do that without risking losing their jobs, procedurally so? Yes. Um, any worker in any working environment or place, if he or she um, has reasonable cause to believe that his or her own safety is at risk, uh, by, con by either continuing to work in the, in the same environment or place, mm -hmm. uh, he or she can excuse herself or his, himself to, uh, by removing from that place. But first of all, uh, 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 such employee must um, first seek the assistance of, an, uh, of a workplace safety representative who might, be, who, might, who might represent him or her at any meeting held. And... Um, or uh, such an employee must uh, report to, to, to his or her immediate supervisor or, or, or a safety or a workplace safety officer. Yes. Okay. Mm. So let me just ensure that I have your um, sentiment correct. So what mm. you are saying is that in an event an employee finds themselves in an, 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 in an endangered um, environment, mm. even the workplace, they do not just take off and leave. They first need to notify their immediate supervisor yes. and also perhaps conduct the occupational um, health um, specialist on the ground mm -hmm. to ensure that the situation is known to them and mm -hmm. then take off. Yes. So in, in that manner, they are protected and they, they will not be uh, risking losing their job. Yes. All right. Miss mm -hmm. um, Nidengwa. Earlier too, when you were speaking on the um, responsibilities of the employers as well as uh, employees um, in a working environment, I want to find out from you, um, in Namibia, do we, do we really, do we practice uh, uh, in, your, uh, in your experience? Um, do you think that the Namibian uh, labor force practice these um, responsibilities? And, and by this, I mean both on, from the perspective of an employee as well as that of an employer. Um, thank you for the question. Um, not, to, not at the desired level. Mm. Uh, in, at the beginning, I spoke about the responsibility of employers. Workers also have responsibility. They also have duty. Let me just highlight them shortly. Mm -hmm. um, 
they have responsibility to work safely to make sure that they are, their own health and, and the health and safety of their co-workers are not affected by the way they are working. They have responsibility to cooperate with the, work, uh, with the employer just to make sure that they, when the employer uh, um, implement control measures, they should adhere to that, but not to do, other, um, to do it other, other ways, otherwise. Um, however, as we have heard, they have a right to remove themselves from, from unsafe working environment. Mm -hmm. Now, when you come to adherence or, or compliance to, 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 to the law and regulations, the compliance is not at the desired level, as I have indicated, and this is from depends on where you are going. Sometimes you go in a, you visit uh, the company or the workplace, you find the employer. It's trying to come up with, with control measures and here the, the workers are not cooperating. Or you enter a workplace and it's like the employer never doesn't understand the importance of health and safety at workplace. Mm -hmm. So it's in, when it comes to compliance, I would say it's not at a desired level. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm just going to follow up, um, sticking with you, Ms. Ngidengwa. Mm -hmm. um, in your expertise view, when the organizations, uh, let's say uh, employers, uh, come up with the policies of um, occupational health and safety, are the employees consulted or is it left for, to the management to action alone? The Labor Act make it very clear. Any policy or program relating to the health and safety of employees, employees have to be involved. They have to be consulted. So uh, that policy has to be developed in consultation with the employers and their representative. Not just by the management alone, but in consultation with the employees and their representative. Representative, uh, we mean it can be the health and safety representative and the unions that are representing those workers. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, Namibia, as you may know, this is um, a conversation of national concern, and uh, therefore we are inviting you, our viewers and listeners, to. Um, to, to engage us on our social media platforms. You, on, on, on Facebook, we are at Ministry of Information Communications Technology, hyphen Republic of Namibia. Or you can also stream us live on our YouTube channel. Our handle there is MICT Namibia. As we wait uh, for the, con the conversation, I mean, as we wait for the viewers' um, contributions, questions, and um, everything in that regard. We continue with the conversation here in the studio. Um, Mr. Johannes, how does Ministry of Labor ensure that health and safety legislation is being adhered to by both the employers and employees? Um, yes, um, um, this is um, attainable. Uh, by the, 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 the ministry has um, occupational health and safety inspectors who conduct um, regular inspections in the workplaces uh, to verify the, the, the compliance level of, um, of, the, of both the employer and the employees within the particular uh, or workplaces. Yeah, um, these uh, inspections um, include um, um, a physical inspection, whereby they go around inspecting the place, and also it, inc it may include um, um, uh, looking at um, uh, operational, health and operational health and safety uh, uh, documents and files, and also uh, interviewing both the employer and the employees. Uh, yeah, and also on machinery inspections in the workplace. We have machineries which we classify as dangerous machineries in the workplace. And these um, uh, include uh, boilers, elevators, and escalators. 
they also need to be inspected uh, regularly and um, uh, certified safe for use by both the, 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 the user, the, the, the employees, and, and anyone, and any, any, any of their customers. And um, yeah, that's basically it. And um, uh, if uh, it happens that um, uh, um, uh, non-compliance is detected in, 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 a, in a particular workplace, the inspector um, uh, pro, uh, provides uh, recommendations to the to, to the to the employer to 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 to, to, to improve on them. Okay. Yeah, and uh, and the ample time I believe is is also um, granted to the employer to 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 attend to to, to such recommendations. All right. Yes. Um, okay. Sticking with you, Mr. Johannes, I just want to find out how often does the ministry send inspectors to go and inspect the conditions on uh, at these organizations? Um, like I mentioned, it's uh, it's done uh, regularly. Um, for for instance, the, the, the industrial inspectors or patient health and safety industrial inspectors, they conduct their inspections. Um, it could be on on monthly basis. Or, or in weeks time or after, depending on the industry that they are going to, to conduct inspections. If an industry is so big, then they, 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 they may need to go back. But on, 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 on machinery, for instance, it's, uh, it's regulated that um, uh, every machinery, uh, by that I mean an elevator, an escalator, a boiler, should be inspected uh, by the, the, the government operational health and safety uh, inspector at least um, once every year, or, or when they, or when there's a, a, a complaint tendered with our ministry, then we go out and conduct inspections in that regard. Okay. Yes, yes. Um, I hear you. Um, I would, however, want to um, find out. Um, when you say ample time, so the employer is given ample time mm -hmm. to ensure that uh, the conditions are uh, rectified. Yes. When we speak of ample times, especially in uh, companies or, or organizations where the, the lives of the employers are at, at risk, mm -hmm. what is ample time? And um, in an event that perhaps uh, this employee loses their life whilst we, uh, I mean, the, the organization is being accorded ample time to rectify the conditions on the ground. Mm. Who is then at fault? No, no, no. By ample time, I mean um, if there's just general um, non compliance, mm -hmm. then um, at the discretion of, of an inspector, by assessing the, the condition, mm -hmm. he, may, he may decide on the time to, to, to give to the employer. But if the if the issue is that it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a situation that might cause a injury or, or an accident or even a loss of life, then that, that, um, then that may, may even lead to, to an inspector um, um, granting a compliance order or stopping the, 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 the continuation of, the, of, 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 of work. All right. Um, Ms. Ngidengwa? Kindly your two cents on what I've just um, asked Mr. Johannes. Mm. Um, in an event where there is a, a, um, a certain condition at a given organization and uh, the employer is being given uh, ample time, uh, I just want us to quantify what is ample time when we speak of uh, the lives of employees being compromised on the, on the ground. Um, when do we expect action from this employer? Okay, thank you. Um, <clears throat> the Labor Act provides 30 days for, 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 for an employer to rectify on non-compliance. Mm -hmm. um, but when you come to health and safety, there are situations that you, you, you find that this one cannot go to tomorrow. And this is what we are referring to uh, is life-threatening situations mm -hmm. where an inspector have to take a decision and 
just close the workplace or order the, the employer to, to close the operation immediately. Uh, similar to, to uh, rectification of, of, of some, some non-compliance, is you, you give recommendations, you, there are those matters that you will see or you know as a human being that this will not be, uh, the employer will not be able to sort it out in 30 days. Mm -hmm. Probably you, you, you will need to give like two months. Mm -hmm. Let's say if, if perhaps you need them to, to recruit a health and safety officer. Definitely, they will need to, 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 to come up with, uh, to look at their uh, uh, recruitment process, they have to advertise, they have to conduct interview, and so on. So it, it will depend on, on what, what is the non-compliance, and uh, um, yeah, it depends on the non-compliance, and the, the, the case to say what, what is the specific issue that you want to be addressed, because when you come to health and safety, not all the areas that will go up to the 30 days. Some have to go even up to 15 because we pay every item or every area we, as we give recommendation, we notify them to say, this one, I need it to be done by when. Although the Labor Act uh, provided for the compliance order to be, uh, or the employee, employers to be given 30 days to comply to the compliance order. All right, we have a comment from our social media. It's on Facebook. Uh, Richie Third Type asks, where can one register as a safety officer in Namibia? Ms. Mudengwa, can you take that? Yes, um, good afternoon, Richie. Thank you for the question. Um, unfortunately, at this stage, we do not have an institution where you can register as a safety officer uh, but we advise um, job seekers I know you are asking the professional registration if, if, if I'm correct you, you might be asking for a professional registration we do not have a profession which is registering a safety officer to say uh, but uh, the Minister of Labor have uh, a, a system uh, where job seekers register themselves, wh what we call NIS, where they register themselves so that uh, uh, employers uh, can have access to, 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 to those uh, job seekers. All right. Um, now, I'm sticking with you, Ms. Mitangwa. At the 110th session of the International Labour Conference, which took place in May and June this year, the International Labour Organization, Al Al ILO, pardon me, adopted the inclusion of a safety and healthy working environment in the ILO's uh, framework of fundamental principles and rights at work. What does this mean? Oh. Can you talk to us about this? Thank you. Um, this is a new development. Um, as you have said, it, it just happened on the, uh, the adoption just took place on the 10th of uh, June, uh, where ILO have adopted the inclusion of occupational safety, inclusion of safe and healthy working environment into ILO fundamental principles um, and rights at work. Um, this adoption come with, with uh, two, two, two conventions which are declared as the fundamental conventions and that is convention 155, uh, the Occupational Safety and Health Convention and the convention of uh, the promotional framework of occupational safety and health, which is convention 187. Mm -hmm. um, we know as a member state, uh, we are required to ratify ILO conventions. Now, what does it mean now to say 
uh, health and safety is being now upgraded to a fundamental rights. Uh, it means all member states, irrespective of your ratification status, whether you have ratified Convention 155 and Convention 187 or not, we are obliged to respect and to promote um, the principles and rights outlined in those conventions. All right. Now, Namibia, as Elia alluded to, today we are discussing occupational health and safety in workplaces, and we are inviting you, our viewers and listeners, to take part in this conversation of national importance. You can stream us live on Facebook. We are at Ministry of Information, Communications and Technology, hyphen Republic of Namibia or you can stream us live on our YouTube channel. Our handle there is MICT Namibia. Alternatively, you can call us in the studio. Our call-in number is 061, that is the area code, 400397. The call-in number is 061 400397. As we wait for the views and the contributions from our viewers and listeners, we would like, I mean, we continue with the conversation here in the studio, and I would like to continue with you, Ms. Ngidengwa. Now that occupational safety and health is being elevated to the ILO's framework of fundamental principles and rights, what is expected at both national and enterprise level? Um. We need, we have a lot to do, all right, for us to make sure that we are adhering to, to the principles and rights that are outlined in those conventions. Um, at the national level, really, we need to start acknowledging and prioritizing occupational safety and health and include it in the national agenda. Um, ensure that there's sufficient budget uh, to cover or to cater for, for operations uh, that are pertaining to occupational safety and health. And this budgeting, I'm referring to budgeting for, to ensure that we have uh, enough human resources, we have sorry, enough. Sorry, sorry, Ms. Ngidengwa, to cut you short. We have a caller on the line, Franz from Sokop Moon. Good afternoon, Franz. Hello, Franz, can you hear us? Um, Franz, if you have your TV set on or radio, kindly switch it off so that we can hear you. Can you hear us, Franz? All right, I think we are experiencing technical difficulties there. We might have lost out on Franz, but I'm hoping that he calls back. Um, all right, uh, Ms. Nidango, maybe we can continue where we left off before Franz called in. All right, thank you. Um, we have to make sure that we, we have provided enough resources in terms of human capital, in terms of financing, and it, just to make sure that we have enabling factors uh, to make sure that we, we reach out to the public, we reach out um, the workplaces so that we promote occupational safety and health. Um, that's at the national level. The other, uh, other area that we need to consider at the national level is to strengthen our law and policy. Um, uh, lucky enough with us in Namibia, in December we just launched our first uh, national occupational safety and health policy. Um, and that policy has got strategy of promoting occupational safety and health. So we are already on the way of promoting the subject 
that we go out and make sure that health and safety is being promoted at workplace. Okay, Ms. Midengo, hold on to that thought. We have another caller on the line. Anytime from Tumir. Good afternoon, anytime. How are you this afternoon? I'm being fine and I'm being on All right. How would you like to add your voice to the conversation today? Uh, it's just a question that I want to pose to the safety and the health in the workplaces. And I'll be, I'll be very much specific to the safety industry, like the, the tackle industry. Uh, we see the, the working conditions of the tackle makers, as in particular in the, on the farm. Uh, even though your topic is more on the safety and the health, it does not include the salaries or the wages, so to say, but I'll be specific on the uh, safety and health. Now, these capital makers on the farm, how do the Ministry of Labor intervene on the subject under the safety on the health of the capital makers on the farm? We see these farm makers, as particular, who are making their work. They are working in conditions, they are not safe. Even if you the, 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 the clothing that they use, they are not of uh, a safe. The healthy hazards are exposed to them. How does the Ministry of Labor uh, respond to that one? Thank you. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Anytime. I will post your question to. Ms. Nidengwa and Mr. Johannes can add uh, when All right, you can. Thank you. All right. All right, Ms. Nidengwa, you um, mm. took note of his question. Yes, I did. Okay. Uh, Mr. Anytime, thank you very much for, for the question. Um, yes, charcoal industry, it's one of the challenging industry, I, I can say, when it comes to um, enforcement of the law. Why am I saying it, 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 it's a challenging industry? It's a challenging industry uh, in a sense that most of the situation where these people, where the, the charcoal workers are working, there is no employer-employee relationship. There is no contract to say Petrina is being employed by Eleni is an employer. Um, it, it, their contract, it, I mean their working relationship, it, 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 it's, it's somehow not clearly uh, crafted. However, there is uh, um, an association working on that. And uh, right now there's a consultation in the government that uh, uh, there's a stakeholder consultation uh, whereby our ministry is, is also part of those stakeholders to work on the issues that uh, charcoal industry is it, facing on a daily basis. But at the stage where we are, I can confirm um, is uh, um, Mr. Anytime have noted that uh, perhaps nothing much is happening there, I can confirm that it's, it's one of really the industry which is, it's, uh, I can say, giving us a headache when it comes to, to enforcement of, of uh, health and safety law and most of other labor law. All right. We have a question on our social media platform. Uh, it's on Facebook and um, Dennis Dennis is asking, please elaborate on health, safety, and environment, except for the information set out in the Labor Act of Namibia. Yes, uh, there is another comment that is also on Facebook. Uh, we can just take note of this one and then we um, collectively respond. Okay. Uh, Benny is asking, what about emotional and psychological safety and health? Namibia fall prey of unhealthy work relations, abuse, harassment, bullying, and unscrupulous seniors daily. <laughs> yes, okay, so we will assign, I will assign the questions um, uh, to collectively, 
the team can uh, address the questions. Ms. Nidengo, we can start with you. Um, uh, thank you. Uh, if I can go to the first question, where uh, the, the, uh, the viewer wants elaboration on, on occupational safety, health, and environment. Mm -hmm. um, it, okay, except, mm -hmm. except for the information set out in the Labor Act. Mm -hmm. um, the, the question is somehow um, not really clear, mm -hmm. but what I can say here, Dennis, is that um, we know health, safety, and environment, they, there is an interlink between what is happening at workplace and at the environment in general. Uh, because if the workplace, if there are no control measures to, 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 to prevent the emission of what is happening at workplace, that can go out and affect the environment, it can, affect, it can pollute the air that we are breathing in, it can contaminate the water, it can contaminate the land. Uh, therefore, uh, the, uh, that's why I'm saying, or oh, that's why we, uh, most of the time we, people speak about health, safety, and environmental management, that when we manage the safety at the workplace, I mean the, the operation at the workplace effectively, it will definitely also ensure that the environment in general is, so, is also safe for the public, it's also safe uh, for the community out there. That is what I can say uh, um, pertaining to, to the question from, from Dennis, Jr. Okay. Um, to the next question, the next question the view is asking about, if we can just have it, the emotional, psychological safety and health. Uh, Namibia fall prey to unhealthy working relations, abuse, harassment, bullying, and um, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, if we hear from the definition of health, um, we spoke about, when we talk about health, it, it covers the physical, the psychological, social well-being. And uh, uh, the Namibian law does not allow any abuse, harassment, or bullying at work, please. Uh, let me also uh, use this opportunity just to inform the viewer that Namibia uh, have ratified Convention 190, uh, which is a convention uh, on, on violence and harassment, um, that we, I think we are the second country to ratify that new convention. So as we, we have ratified that convention, we are working towards to promote the convention or what the, the provisions of the convention. And we started 20, 2021 uh, with awareness of, of violence and harassment. Uh, um, violence and harassment at workplace that we need towards uh, working a good relationship and um, addressing the issue of harassment and bullying at workplace. So it's not acceptable. All right, um, Mr. Yannis, do you have um, a contribution to make on to what the, um, the social media comments are asking? whereby if a, a certain uh, employee has an, a grievance against another, there are internal process to follow as part of, uh, as also, I think, part of their wellness program. Okay. Yeah. Ms. Um, Nidangwa, the prevention of work-related incidents requires participation and cooperation from both parties. Actions are required on promotion of preventative culture at workplace. So what are those actions that are required? 
at workplace. Um, actions that are required at the workplace to ensure the prevention of, uh, of accidents and, and uh, occupational incidents. And uh, I really want the public to understand that when we're talking about uh, workplace incidents, we include both physical, to say accidents, injuries, incidents of abuse, mm. Those are all occupational incidents. As long as it happen at workplace, they are all occupational. And therefore, they are all reportable to the Ministry of Labor. Um, now, what are the actions that are required? Ms. Uh, Nidengwa, please hold on to that thought one more time. No. We have Franz. Franz from Sokop Moon is back. Franz, good afternoon. Good afternoon, ma'am. How are you? I'm great. All right. Well, how would you like to add your voice to the conversation this afternoon? Yeah, well, I didn't uh, follow the whole uh, session, but my comment is uh, it is not possible for our labor, labor we need to, really to employ. This is sort of that we are having in place. So they can be a bit, you know, like a force. Whenever they decide to penetrate any company at any day, any minute, then they go to inspect uh, how the employees are being treated and what and what and what. You see? Instead of now, nowadays, the, the inspectors that we are having, the people who used to come even whenever one of the employees report any treatment which is not good there, is when they come and first they approach the, 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 the office. Most of the employee, employees are being left behind. They don't know what was the negotiation and what. When they come out, you will hear that, okay, that story, we, we take the matter up and uh, we finish. You see? And then the, 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 the employees themselves are being left behind. They don't know what, what did the boss and the, or the, the inspectors uh, discuss. You see? They must be just equipped like a force member with uniform and whatever and being given any power. Now they are just ordinary civilians like us and uh, we never even uh, they visit any workplace. The employees, they don't mind them. Okay. That was my... Okay. Okay, Franz, that is loud and clear. Um, I will, um, I think that is more of a comment then it is a question yeah. or it's a contribution. Um, I will hear the sentiments of uh, the experts here in the studio. Um, please go back to your TV sets or radio and listen in to your response. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. All right. Now, Ms. Nidangwa, um, so Franz is alluding to the fact that, you know, when the labor inspectors come, it should, they should come unannounced, as in as somebody tips them off that there is um, in compliance happening at a certain institution and therefore they show up. Now, in what, with what, is, what has been happening uh, is that, you know, they, they would first come and they come and go straight to the office and the employer will get their act right because they, they know that the, the inspector is coming and um, I think he's also bringing in a notion of the, um, the employees need to be consulted in some way also. Um, it seems he feel that the um, inspectors that we currently have are not that empowered. What are your views on that? All right, um, I thank you, uh, Mr. Franz, for the question. Um, I do agree that perhaps you don't see more or you want to see more inspectors. Um, the number of inspectors in the countries, they are very, it's, it's few mm -hmm. that I can confirm. Um, however, when it comes to, to the power of inspectors, inspectors have power um, outlined in the Labor Act a power to enter the workplace at any time without notifying the employer, 
power to, docu uh, to, to demand for documents, power to issue a compliance order. It, it's a long list of power, uh, which is the statutory power. Um, in terms of uniform, we, we, we do have, especially for, for safety and health inspectors, we, we, we have what we say personal protective keys. And also for inspectors for the condition of employment, normally they put on something that, so that they can be an identifiable, a reflective jacket. Um, and we normally carry our, our, our identification card. Now, the issue of going for investigation, for instance, or for ins inspection, a workplace is, is a place owned by somebody, okay? And as much as I have power to enter any time, I cannot just enter without informing them. I have to go to the office and tell them, I am home, home, and this is the purpose for me to be here. And then I before I start my work. Um, so there's nothing wrong for the inspector to go to the office and notify the office or notify the employer, inform the employer to say he or she is in, 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 in such workplace. In terms of now a complaint uh, where the inspector need to go out and do the investigation is the same thing. If a worker come to me complaining of something that happened at work, please, definitely I will need to hear from, from the employer. This and that was reported at our office, what are you saying? But it does not end there. Mm -hmm. It has to go back to the worker and get more view. At one point, when you get a view of the employer, you get the view of the workers. At the end, you will need to sit with them together and uh, uh, analyze what you get initially and the way to say these are the issues so that you will be able to advise them together at the same time. So that is the normal procedure that we follow when we are investigating or when we are conducting workplace inspection. All right. Uh, now, before earlier before Franz called, you were busy um, okay. elaborating on the actions that are required um, in the promotion of a preventative culture at a workplace. Maybe we can just go back to what you were saying. All right. Um, when we're talking about preventative culture, we are looking at a culture where you have employer doing or implementing some measures which are more proactive than reacting to incidents. So uh, it requires to say employer have to, I have spoken about it from the beginning, employer have to make sure that they have identified the risk. They have conducted the risk assessment to make sure that these are the hazards and with th these are the hazards and the risk. And with those risks, we need to come up with these control measures for us to avoid the exposure, for us to avoid the incidents. Um, the other action which is quite important in the promotion of occupational safety and health is a, is a uh, um, social dialogue between the employer and the workers. Uh, the social dialogue and participation. Uh, employer have to make sure that workers are involved, especially when they are developing policy, when they, they are developing any program that is pertaining to their safety and health. Um, the other issues is, a key issue here is the communication, that employer have to communicate with the workers. They have to make sure that workers are aware of, of the risk and hazards that are associated with the work that they do so that they also know how they can protect themselves from exposure to, to, to those risks. Um, uh, and we know when there's a communication, it also promotes and enhances ownership. And when emplo uh, employees are involved, really they, they carry that is their program if they carry that is, is, is their workplace program, then they, they have to adhere to that. So those are the, the key uh, action that is required to promote safety and health at workplace. All right. Um, 
Mr. Yannis, we have not forgotten about you. I just wanted you to quickly um, speak on the importance of employer dialogue. Why, why do you think employer dialogue is important as far as safety and um, occupational health is concerned? In a nutshell, and also in addition, kindly, please, your concluding remarks. Well, first, I will need clarity on employer dialogue. Okay. What does it entail? All right. Um, um, in that regard, then, uh, um, I think Ms. Nidengwa has alluded to it. I just wanted to hear your sentiments on what you think that is. But uh, Ms. Nidengwa, what are the ministry's plan on creating awareness amongst workers and employers um, on the labor legislation and occupation, safety and health in particular? And in addition to that, kindly, your concluding remarks, we have run out of time. Right. I, I thank you very much. As I have indicated, the ministry have launched this policy. It, it's a, a national occupational safety and health policy. In this policy, one of the strategy is to promote um, occupational safety and health. Uh, in public and also at workplace, just to make sure that um, the, the 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 workforce is aware of the labor law. The workforce is, is aware of their requirement in terms of occupational safety and health, and uh, particularly uh, um, that now we we have uh, the new development of inclusion of safety and health as a. a, a I love fundamental uh, principle and right. Mm -hmm. we, we really need to work on that. So we already have a strategy. We discovered by the policy. Uh, we just need to, to work out on the framework and uh, uh, make sure that all our stakeholders, uh, stakeholders uh, and social partners, that is the employers and the workers, they are involved uh, um, in this awareness. and. Um, uh, that we we are promoting uh, together because at the end they are the implementer. So uh, that is what we need to do. My concluding my remarks. concluding remarks is to um, um, I would like to urge the Namibian workforce that we, we need to work together, we need to cooperate to make sure that we take Namibia safety and health system at the desired level or health and safety at workplace at the desired level. Uh, more specifically that uh, now safety and health has been elevated at, at another level. We don't want Namibia to be listed as a country which is violating the rights at workplace. So we need to pull up our socks, uh, work together, and make sure that safety and health of workers are ensured at workplace. All right. Well, there you have it, Namibia. That is all the time we had for today's discussion. I sure hope you have learned a thing or two. Join us again on Wednesday as we unpack another topic of national concern here at the Government Information Center. From myself, Hileni Felipe Samunyela, and the entire GIC production crew, it's goodbye. <laughs>